There's nothing like that feeling when you are going on holiday and you're walking to the airport with your bag and you're thinking, right, it's literally me, the security, the plane, and then my destination. So I am off to Kenya for the next three weeks and I'm going to give you a behind the scenes tour of what you can do. Welcome to Kenya. First is grab your Uber driver or your cabbie and enter a beautiful hotel. I had the pleasure of staying at the social house in Nairobi in Lavington and they hosted me for a few nights. I want to show you what I got up to in the hotel itself, around the hotel and what you can do in the first 72 hours of being in Nairobi. Welcome to Kenya. Security here is top notch. Not only do we have to enter gates to get into the hotel, but you have to scan your bags before you come on through. And that's such a good sign, right? Upon entering, I had such a good experience at the social house. They knew we were coming. They made an effort to learn our names. They made sure that we got some fresh orange juice and water on arrival because obviously after a long flight, you're dehydrated. And there was also some scrumptious cakes and tea, which... Well, we'll get to, but you know, if you know me, you know that I love a good piece of cake. And trust me, given that this was the first things I saw when I entered Kenya, I was like, yeah, this is my place and I am ready to eat and drink and enjoy. They also have three restaurants in the facilities itself. One is a steakhouse. So this is called Copper. Upstairs is Inca, which is Peruvian. And they have their own restaurant, which I had for breakfast and it was yum. But we'll get onto that in just a second. So believe it or not, this is actually one of the first times that I've created a travel vlog of this style. So this is just me trying to figure out the angles and what you do when you're drinking orange juice, creating a travel vlog, and you are tired from your flight. Coming into the room is great. Karibu Sonia, welcome to the house. And this is a nice tour. I mean, a beautiful bathroom, great mirror and lighting. The selfies are coming up. Really good size shower. Um, they had the toiletries intact as well and fresh towels, which is really important, especially when you're paying for that luxury experience and a separate toilet. When you are staying in four and five star hotels, trust me, they have this thing where they like to have like an open plan bathroom. And I just think it's really weird. So for me, it was great that the two were separated. This is the room itself. Nice big TV, fresh linens. What a great size bed. You can see it. It's just more than a double, maybe not a king or queen, but it was super comfortable. Um, around the bedroom, there's a sofa, a chair, office space. So obviously, you can get your work done and a mini fridge. But one of my favorite things was they had social house coffee and they had these beautiful little cups of tea, kettle and Kenyan tea bags. And trust me, I'm now a big fan of Karicha Gold. Um, so you might hear that a few times in the vlogs coming up. And this is just me saying hi and getting excited with the mirror. At this point, I'm just trying out different vlogging styles. You have to understand. One thing I love about hotels is the cute little treats that they leave you. And this was definitely one of them. Because it was super late, it was like 11 p.m. We went to the restaurant upstairs, which is a Peruvian restaurant, to eat. And what a vibe. There was football playing in the background. Everybody was just there having a good time. This was my first ever cultural immersion in Kenya, in Nairobi. And obviously, I'm at a four-star hotel, five-star hotel. So... I do see where the privilege comes in. Definitely worth it. This was chicken and chips. And oh my goodness, the chips there are lovely. In the morning, woke up super early because I was actually recording my talk show. We'll talk about that just in a few. But this is what the outside looked like. They had this pool in the middle of the garden area and a nice setup. You can see it's probably like 6 a.m. Um, and no one is around, but I wanted to get there fresh and early. And the breakfast layout was scrumptious. Honestly, they had anything and everything that you could ask for. Given that this was my first breakfast in Kenya, I definitely think that they set the standards high and I rate Social House for their breakfast. I think when you're staying in a four, five star location, service has to be impeccable. And I kid you not, Social House had such great tea, mixed tea in the mornings, that on day one, I ordered it and it was so good that I probably had like four or five just that morning. Um, and then every day they remembered it. So as soon as I sat down, they'd be like, oh, Sonia, here's your tea. And that is what makes good service. This is just me getting ready for our talk show shoot, which we'll talk about in just a little bit. And this is some of the outside scenery. I mean, going from London, I definitely think that I didn't expect this much green in Nairobi, but it was so nice to be surrounded by that. 
We literally spent 12 hours recording and then in the evening, Sanjeev and her husband took us out to a local restaurant. This was a new restaurant. I think it was called Biat Salam, but I'm just going to make sure that that was correct. And we had sweet corn. We had chicken. We had a gali. We had seafood. I mean, the food was really good. Like, really good. The presentation was on point. And also the vibe was definitely there. You could tell that you were in something a bit more high class. I would say in terms of restaurant location and venue, it was great. It was more on the expensive side and it definitely had a vibe to it. Day two, again, I woke up early. I can't help it, but my body clock just did that. And this is a view of the pool side. There's also really gorgeous bathrooms and I feel like you can't really not take a selfie or a video. So I just wanted to show you the lighting is impeccable. But more than that, more than that, it was the fresh fruit. So I had passion fruit, watermelon, pineapple, berries i swear down every single day and the vibe was very artsy it was inspirational it made you want to get up and do work this was the upstairs rooftop so inca that turned into a morning co-working space and breakfast bar and just a good vibe as you can see there's so much natural sunlight that for someone like myself who works on a laptop on a screen has migraines wants to be surrounded by nature especially when you're on a business trip i think it was great and then after doing some work, it was back to the poolside, um, just lounging around, you know? I am on holiday, remember? So it was about lounging around, just having a little bit of fun. Opposite the social house, there's a small mall. So I wanted to check out what local mall looks like, but also exchange money. And then obviously you can't really go to a mall without seeing what their coffees and cakes look like. So this was the art cafe. And I think I fell in love with it. The food was fresh. They sold everything from cheeses to biscuits to cafes to cheesecakes. But what I really wanted to try was a chicken pie and an ice cold coffee, as you can see here. There was an outside space. The sun was out. There was a whole vibe. And Kenya generally is quite a warm place. So it was so nice to have that heat just, just on top of you. You know, you could just feel it. And outside there was a Maasai market. I had my cold coffee. Um, this is what YouTube vloggers do. They film themselves drinking tea and eating food. So I just wanted to jump into that trend. I'm not really sure what I meant to be doing here, but I was definitely enjoying the food. And I would say that Kenyan chips are so, 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 so good that every meal I had, I actually had with chips because it was so good. Um, oh, just look at that, right? Presentation is on point, but the taste was great too. This is a Maasai market, which is basically just a market where the Maasai folks and other folks come and sell their goods, which is great. And then I'd go back to the social house and they had salsa night. So I didn't really get involved because I was super tired, but I definitely watched them all have a great time. I just sat outside and took in the vibe. The social house is really for like tech entrepreneurs, business people, those with money. They're definitely not your average individuals in Nairobi before I went for dinner I wanted to check out the gym and I feel like when you're doing YouTube videos especially on travel no one goes to the gym which is such an important part of your stay especially when you're thinking about wellness and health and fitness whilst you are traveling like your business traveling right you're going to eat a lot you're going to dine out a lot it's good to maintain some level of mental and emotional and physical health so the gym definitely had all the equipment you needed. It had weights, it had mats. I was just there stretching. It had free water bottles. It had a really cool view, AC. So I definitely rate it. I don't think it was the best gym in the world or the ones that I've seen in the other hotels which I stayed. So you can find out more about those videos as we start launching them. And remember to subscribe so that you know when they're about to premiere. One of my favorite things about Social House is the vibe. And even at nighttime, it was popping. Day three, I'm sure you can tell by now I am an actually an early bird. Um, I wanted to be there when the sun was shining. This was actually breakfast in Inca, which was the Peruvian restaurant that I went to on the first night, which they turned into the brunch place, especially on the weekend. Fresh juice, fruit, obviously the mixed tea. I've already spoken about that. It was so good. And the natural light coming in. I really just spent the morning reading. I bought a bunch of books from london but also one really good thing about social house is they had a book library so i just spent my time people watching reading soaking in the sun and just being grateful for where i am i mean come on it's not every day you get to stay in like a four or five star resort right especially with so many great people around you it was good for networking not that i was doing this early in the morning um but here i am with a mixed tea 
I probably had two or three cups before I even started recording myself. And it's so funny, as soon as I finish one cup, a team member would honestly come and refill my, my cup for the next one without me even asking. And I just feel like when you're away for a business trip, a traveling trip, but also to relax, that's the kind of service that you're looking forward to. So today I want to check out the local malls and markets and I wanted to wear my new bag gifted by Florian London and my new croc wedgies, which I bought. Um, I've never worn crocs before, but I just thought it was a whole vibe. So I dressed up as if I was really going somewhere and my friend Sanjeev took us to Village Market. This is, again, one of the first times that I saw Kenya, or Nairobi at least, in the daytime. So it was just interesting to see the build that's going on, the colour of the clouds, the, I don't know, the land around you, like it was super orange, right? Village Market was this massive mall um, and it had this really cool outdoor space, indoor vibe and a food market. So I think we just grabbed everything we could in the menu. We had pasta, we had sandwiches, we had Chinese, we had dessert. Um, I don't really think there's anything that we left off of our plates and I'll show you all the food that we had in just a second. But it also had so many great shops and it was a really good vibe. I mean, I understand that, you know, not everybody likes shopping, but I thought it was such a good place just to walk around, take in some of the views, some of the nature, see what locals do, especially on the weekends and bank holidays and just feel like you're really immersing yourself in the culture. I just think there's nothing better when it comes to immersing yourself in the culture than going to a local food court and having their food. Sanji's family owns Zucchini, which is a grocer's, and so I really want to try sugarcane juice. We went and also saw all of these great items that they stock from bakery items all the way to fresh vegetables. There were some vegetables that I'd never seen before, so I, I was so curious. I started asking about all the vegetables, recipes that you could make, Googling them and just saving them on my notes so that you're taking something away of the culture that you wouldn't necessarily have before. And then again, listen, Nairobi, fresh pastries, 10, 10, I can't even tell you how hard it was to pick one, but I picked a little, um, like a little custard donut with chocolate on top. And we literally just stayed there all day. The social house for me really deserves an eight out of 10. It's a great location. It has good sized rooms. It's of value. It has really good breakfast. Customer service was on point. And most importantly, it was safe and secure, which is what you need, especially when you're going into a new place. And as a woman in business, it had a really cool vibe where I could bring my clients and have coffee meets with them there. My friends could come over and actually enjoy all of the facilities. And I think generally there was no need for you to leave, even though, of course, I left because I wanted to see more of the local life um, and everyday ordinary people. I think some things which I'd love for the social house to consider in the future, which would just make it 10 out of 10, would be more co-working spaces and an investment into their health and wellness facilities. Rolling. I'm so excited that we are launching my new series Tea with Sonia here at the Social House Nairobi. We've spent a whole day filming. We've got some amazing guests. We're collaborating with Breathe Media Nairobi. And the most exciting thing is that we are going to launch very soon. So apart from the fact that I've traveled here and it's been magnificent, and I'm gonna have so many YouTube vlogs available, I'm also going to start Tea with Sonia on the same channel, so make sure you subscribe. If you have any questions, email me hello at soniabarlow.co.uk and follow all my socials across all the channels at soniabarlow.uk.